little bit closer. We're, right. we're, in, we're, in, a, we're in a busy a place. We are busy. I'm going to have to come close. That's right. Um, we'll see if anybody can guess where we are. Well, I guess you did say in the description. <laughs> I did say, but I didn't say exactly where we were mm -hmm. um, in this. Oh, tell me if I have any lipstick on my teeth. Oh, Lord. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Let's be that now. You should have asked see, if, any, if anybody we know comes on, give us a sound check. Let us know if we need to talk louder. Yes. It's always an issue, so we're always aware of that. Um, we've got for a, sure. And then we've got a, a busy road behind us, and yes. Uh, so got some railroad tracks behind us. Hopefully, yeah. a train won't go by. Hopefully, we'll hear it. Mm -hmm. But uh, hi, Jack. Let us know if the sounds good, please, Jack. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Hey, right, so we got like seven. Something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. So, my name is Amy Reed. I'm the curator at the Marietta Museum of History, for those that don't know. And the voice behind you is yes. <laughs> Krista McKay. Thank She's you, our you Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank and you, John. I appreciate it. Say hi to Dad. Oh, hi, Dad. Hi, oh, Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Dad. Look, I'm on TV. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, yeah, so we're, um, we're here out on the road again with our weekly series. We're actually coming up with a, um, a official logo and title for our series. I did use it um, as a hashtag. Oh, you did? I okay. Did. Yeah. What, uh, it, what is it? Um, <laughs> History Loves Company. History Loves Company. Yes. On the road with Amy and Krista. Right. Um, so yeah, so right now we're in an area just a little north of, um, the square, the main downtown Marietta called Elizabeth. Some people may know this area very well. Um, those who grew up in the area, it's not um, an uncommon name you'll see on uh, buildings and street signs around here. Um, but then some people who are new to the area may not know uh, why this is named Elizabeth or And if you're not here. If you're somebody who's not familiar with the square, but know where Kennestone Hospital is, yes. literally just north of that. Just north of Because I know there are a lot of people who've been to Kennestone, but they're going farther than uh, Right. Than if nothing else, and you want to pan over here to... As we see that building on this camera quote. If you read it really quickly, it says, Brandy's world famous hot dogs, which I've never had a hot dog from them. Stand, so what I could find, um, and then it around, and soon after it became a barbecue joint, uh, and then in 1983 it was a it was a little restaurant for that long. In 1983, um, Betty, let me get her last name. Shoot, Betty Garrett um, actually took it over, and it became Betty's World Famous Hot Dogs. And a lot of people around here knew it as Betty's for many, many uh, years. And then around 2000, I don't know the exact year, um, but around 2000, Betty sold the restaurant and her world-famous chili recipe for those chili dogs to um, Brandy Gunner, uh, or gosh, Brandy, what's your, your married name? Well, she was Brandy Gunner. Uh, we're going to have to oh, start gonna... walking because there's a train coming yeah. in. Uh, of course. Of so course. we're going to walk, but this is okay. This is a part of the plan. Yes. Anyway. Um, this is a real that's not part of the main line, and it, it's, I didn't know it was very busy. Well, what to be rail line is it that was, it, it well, was the, well, it was, was. Uh, built as the Marietta and North Georgia Railroad. Yes. So it was built to, um, for the industries that were building up here for the mills to get supplies um, up and down from North Georgia. And it actually went all the way up to Tate, Georgia. And it actually went even farther. It went on, all, even almost to the Georgia North Carolina line. Oh. It went far. There we go. Because they were uh, quarrying marble from up there, too. Yes. So, and there you go, marble. So the main mill here um, that was in this area of town, um, or mills, I should say, were marble mills. Do you want to walk? Yeah, we're going to go this way. So you guys can see some of the mill houses. We're going to keep moving a little bit faster because that train is coming. Okay, so supposedly we're not from Georgia if we haven't had Brandy's hot dogs. 
and onion rings. So, well, not only am I from Georgia, my whole life, the, uh, multiple decades have been spent in Cobb County. Okay, so, uh, um, yeah. you can see the mill houses. Oh, look at the train. It's a pretty oh. train. It's pretty than those CSX trains. Look at that. Patriot Rail. Oh my God. Well, that's what I thought you were saying. Oh, my God. oh, sorry about that. You're not in Marietta unless you hear trains. So, his daughter Elizabeth. Well, they all name their mothers and daughters the same name. Yeah. So it's an Elizabeth Brown, yeah. definitely. Um, but in 1885, they incorporate Elizabeth with a half, a quarter of a mile radius or half mile radius from the engine house that they built here, but that's not here anymore. Right. Um, we think that the station, and there was an Elizabeth station, so um, they built the marble, the Georgia Marble Company uh, started, and then because of the need for um, the community that built up, they built a rail station, which we think was near the intersection of, um, what do we say, Bells Ferry and Old 41? Yes. Yeah, right around there yeah. somewhere. Um, insider sources at CSX yeah. say that that's probably where it is. And that actually, the rail line still refers to this area. There's something over there that... It's not an actual station building, but they refer to that as Elizabeth Station mm -hmm. when they cross that area of the tracks. And um, and so, it, it and even back then, I don't think they had a real station house, more maybe just a platform of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so the Marble Company um, with went gangbusters. It was just um, a very uh, prosperous time for marble um, quarrying in North Georgia. At the time, in the architecture, uh, buildings all around the United States were utilizing marble in their buildings, uh, in their facades, in their monuments. Um, well, as the well first as one didn't do too well. Oh. That's, it's true. American Marble Company, the first one, okay. did not, because I would say it was bad. Oh, yeah, it was American. Business. Yeah, right. American did, was first. It was bad That's business, right. That's right. to be honest. It wasn't they that they didn't have it. enough business to do it. it, they just, nobody kept the books right. Right. Um, and then Georgia, but also Kennesaw Marble, too. Yeah, they, Kennesaw they, Marble came after that, and of course McNeil Marble was in the area, too, but it wasn't in this and, location. Yeah, and uh, that was more over off of, like, 
Kennesaw Avenue, and then Little Butler, a little bit south, and then Butler Marble mm -hmm. was even farther south. It was south of the square, square. Yeah. near yeah. Glover Street yeah. down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the one up here, and if you're familiar with the Camira um, chemical plant that's right here at uh, Old 41 and Church Street Extension, mm -hmm. that big plant right there is actually built around some of the original marble uh, company buildings. So that's where the marble company was located. And they would quarry the marble up in Tate, Georgia, uh, a lot of it in Tate, probably some other areas in yeah. North Georgia too, but um, Tate in particular had a close tie business ties with uh, Marietta businessmen and um, family ties, family too. ties, yeah. Anna Mary, there's a lot of Tates in the McNeil's families and all that. And Anderson. Uh, and Anderson, Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, so they would quarry it up there and then bring the big slabs of marble down here to Marietta where they would, the skilled um, artisans really would mm -hmm. create uh, the slabs needed for different projects. Do you want to pull out some of those pictures? Sure. Of them? So we actually are very, very lucky to have some um, images, but I do know KSU's archives has a lot about Georgia, Georgia marble um, in their um, collection. Uh, we just have a few things, but... I am sir. Where are your pictures? Atlanta Road near Austell Road, a railroad control box used to be painted with the name of Elizabeth. Hey, I don't know. Um, Joey, the name of the hot dog place is Brandy's, well, famous hot dogs. It was Betty's, but it is Brandy's now. Um, There's this. You, not that one. Not that one. Um, that okay. kind of lists some of the places that Georgia okay. marble's been used. But, like, the Illinois Monument is made out of Georgia marble. Ah, here we go. So you guys can see that smokestack. That is the smokestack that they took down last year. Mm -hmm. um, built somewhere around 1885. Yes, we do have a brick to that. Um, so we do have a piece of that one. Um, I had to make sure that I wore gloves when I handled that brick. Didn't know what kind of chemicals yeah, were going to be on it. Who knows now. So here's another one. You can see the smokestack. Hold on, there's my finger. Oops, sorry, there it is. Right there. Right there. Sorry. I don't know where the camera is. <laughs> And these are all taken in around 1910. Yeah, about that, yeah. So some new building part of it uh, for the company um, when it's the Kennesaw Marble Company. Yeah, and then there was the water tower, and you can see all that marble there waiting to be worked on. Um, I don't think I printed – we can do the next one. I don't think I printed the pictures. We do have a couple of pictures of the workmen, like, with the marble on lathes. And look, see, there's the mountain. See, there used to be farmland over here. This it wasn't, is nothing. It's so built up now. It and it's all medical. I mean, it's so far. Uh, Krista and I drove around just a little bit before mm -hmm. we um, started filming, um, just looking to see what's left in the area. Um, there are some older buildings, but not a whole lot. Um, some some of the mill homes, but then a lot of it's just being taken over by all the medical buildings for Kennesaw. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, there is, it, we went farther down the road and kind of there's just a lot of, oh, yeah, so this, see, people need to start doing letterheads like this again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty. Just pretty. So. See if I can make us a logo that looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> I like your magic. Our film series. Here's another one. Great, now I have ideas. Okay, so this one actually came um, from Jeff McVeigh, who works at Camira. So he, thank you for him for letting me print some of these out. So you can see where it says Kennesaw Marble. So, just a clarification, Georgia Marble Company is a larger company that um, had operations in different places, not just Marietta. So this, here's another one. This actually comes from um, one of their original cattle or books that we have about Georgia Marble. Because, you know, Georgia Marble, not just for monuments, for buildings, but for gravestones and things like that, it, 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 interiors of building, the Lowe's. Um, movie theater in downtown Atlanta where Gone with the Wind was premiered mm -hmm. had Georgia Marble inside okay. of it. Oh, yeah. A lot of cool buildings. This you is... mentioned some others, too. Did you print that list off? Yeah, you showed it. You'll have to okay. pull it back. So okay. this is the inside of the chimney. Um, I can guarantee Amy wished she had gone inside there, yes. uh, but she didn't get a chance. No. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's so we have one of those kind of bricks. It's just a, a red mm -hmm. brick. Um, and then it was painted on the outside. Like and then... This. Yeah, there it is. See, painted on the outside. And then right here, let me zoom in. You guys see right at the bottom, it says 1885. So, hi, Bridie. Uh, okay, that's kind of the same. Oh, and then this is what it looked like before. So, when you're driving to and from work or in town or the hospital, you would have seen it. It would look like this. The building is still there that says Camara, but that's where the stack was. That's no longer there. Yeah, so is it, I mean, 
Yeah. They ha okay. People ask, well, why didn't they restore it? Why didn't they take it down? Or why didn't they take it down? It really was too cost prohibitive to maintain it. Yeah. Because structurally, it was so unsound. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we have a piece of it. We have we have record of it in photographs and things like that. So. Oh, some of our references for the company. Okay. Yeah. Um, this these are some of the companies and buildings where you'll find Georgia marble that was made um, by the Georgia Marble Company here in Marietta. So. Uh, Montgomery Ward and Company in Chicago, Electric and Gas Building in Atlanta, St. Cecilia Church in Brooklyn, New York, Post Office in Jacksonville, Florida, the Post Offices in Tampa, Florida, and Savannah, Georgia, um, let's see, Royal Bank of Canada, uh, just kind of go through some of these, Candler Building yeah. in Atlanta, Equitable Bull Building in Atlanta, Piedmont Hotel in Atlanta, the Kimball House, which was uh, um, a hotel in Atlanta. Um, Louisville, Kentucky, passenger stations, uh, l and railroads, mm -hmm. um, Kentucky State Capitol, yeah. uh, let's see, Southern Bell Telegraph Company, what? subway stations in New York, New York. Did they say uh, New Orleans Courthouse or something on that one? Yep, New yeah. Orleans Courthouse, um, and a bunch of other banks and hotels around, all around the country. Um, so, uh, and then I'm pretty sure there's Georgia Marble, at least in the Lincoln Memorial, I don't know what company milled it. Or oh, what milled it, yeah. Or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit of history on the marble uh, industry here in Elizabeth and why the community built up. Oh, another thing we didn't mention is the technical radius of this community and this town was, what was it, half mile? Half, uh, yeah, yeah. The circumference yeah. From, from that smokestack that we showed you. Right, originally it was the engine house, but that wasn't there, so they had to mm -hmm. amend it to the smokestack. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. That's, so it's a little area. Um, and in 1993, I think it was, the state of Georgia, was it 93? Uh, I think it was right around there, 90, somewhere between 93 and 95. Yeah, around there. state of Georgia went around, there was like some like 100 and something cities in Georgia, quote, cities in Georgia that really were never incorporated and weren't really, um, they were kind of ghost well, towns, you know. Well, it, the, the reason that Elizabeth, this city of Elizabeth was no longer a city in 1995, is because there was no elected officials for the city. They never and, had elections. Mm, never took uh, vote. There vote, was no. I mean, so anything, yeah, yeah. So in order to be a city, you had to have elected officials. Mm -hmm. And since Elizabeth did not have that, it was one of those towns across yeah. the state that got. One time they tried to have an election, mm -hmm. right? I think and so. It was over. I think in 1963, maybe somewhere around there. Yes. It was over. Um, the city of Marietta wanted to build some public housing mm -hmm. units in this area, and the residents of Elizabeth did band together to try to create some sort of a vote, but I don't think it ever went through. Mm -mm. Um, so that was the only time that they even tried to work like a regular city. Yeah. Um, other than that, it was just a community. The um, one thing that everybody wanted us to mention was the Marietta Country, no, Elizabeth Country Club. Yeah. Um, or the Marietta Fruit Stand is what it was also known. It was a restaurant, a little restaurant down here, and I think a lot of people um, that grew up in the area that are still around today remember that fondly mm -hmm. as being uh, kind of a local spot for good food. Um, and then also the Elizabeth School yeah. was um, a lot of people that are still around on Facebook we've seen mm -hmm. um, graduated or I don't think it was a high school. Yeah, they attended yeah. the Elizabeth School. Yeah. And we do um, have a little bit on that. It, oh, tell them where the building was. Um, so if you guys know where Come and Get It is, it's right near there. It's where the extension is now. Um, I'm not sure if it's the exact building that the extension is in, but it's definitely in that location. Um, I know Tiffany, her blouse is really pretty. Thanks. <laughs> um... I don't know what we have, so I've got these things. I had them all in chronological order. I know, and then you're so good this and organized. And, and uh, if you ever saw our offices, hers is all organized and mine's like... No, mine is not. Or, mine is in um, organized chaos. Yeah, but, um, I just have chaos. <laughs> so the Elizabeth School, what I do know is, um, it really started at the turn of the 20th century. So around 1902-ish is when I first see a reference to it. And then they try to, uh, they have a bill passed in the state legislature to incorporate a school here in Elizabeth around 1905. And the school pretty much was in operation in, in some form or fashion until uh, the end of the 1985 school year. 
So, I mean, a good 80-year yeah, history. Yeah, a lot of people But it was one of those that. schools where the, the um, kind of like, if you guys watched the one about Wright, or, uh, the Wright Street, Street School when we did the Henry Park um, live video a couple weeks ago, um, it just, it, its attendance kept dropping. Um, and what, I think it, when they closed it, it had around 240 kids um, in it. And so they just divided the kids up between three other schools and closed the school in 85. But what was interesting was there was an article in there, and I might be able to, like, I know, remember it. it. Well, I can remember uh, most of the details. Okay. In the 70s, um, Elizabeth School was, um, like, one of 11 schools across the country to be designated kind of an in environment school for kids where the oh, kids yeah. would learn um, how to be uh, better stewards of nature and things That's like right. that. And it was funny because they said the school was situated along in a wooded area along a clean stream and a polluted stream. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that. But you're thinking about this is, I think you said it was 71. 71. It's, and, and, you know, that's when, before, you know, getting outdoors and recess and all that were really, uh, I, I think, part of the, you know. Well, and also was this, sorry, like this picture's classes. from 1941 of students at Elizabeth School. So they're older. Yes. But, um, but also 1971, you're getting into that whole um, birth day and, and, and being involved in the environment. So it, yeah. it was one of those kind of things. That they all were. those hippies out there, one of, yeah. you know, once you get outside. Yeah, so the Elizabeth School in the 80s, yeah, it closed in 85. So, um, and again, yes. it's right. We've got there. articles on all of these. <laughs> yeah, and I got articles about, like, teachers there. I mean, we are. We got it. You know, it's funny. Good. We. When we do these, when we pick a topic, we're like, okay, let's go pull our reference file. And then he's like, go pull the Elizabeth one. And I go, we don't, don't have, have one. one. So we're making yeah. reference files we as, got we go, one. as we go. And, so. and then, of course, when the schools t uh, shut down, here's the article on um, it will reopen as a home to keep the homeless safe as a, as a Yeah, shelter. so it reopened as a yeah. shelter. And now it's the extension, yeah, which so. um, serves those people. Um, let's see. There was a church, Elizabeth Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth survives changes. There's some good articles about people growing up. Let's see, he had um, yeah, this guy uh, is Norman Medford. Yes, it is Norman yeah. Medford. Yeah, of Medford Funeral Home. Yeah. Um, uh, and, yep. and there's he talks a lot about it in the article, but he says you know there's been some other changes since he remembers Elizabeth. There were no paved streets back then. In fact, I can remember when Highway 41 came by Kennesaw Mountain before it was moved. Highway, not the mountain. Yeah. I don't think they moved the mountain. <laughs> Back then, Highway 41 was just a gravel road. It's hard to believe it was the main road from Chicago to Florida, but it was. I can remember very well when they changed the road and it came through Elizabeth. Um, and he, his, actually, before they had the, uh, before they had the um, funeral home, they had a dairy farm. And oh, so he and yeah. the, he remembers riding with his dad all around Elizabeth, delivering milk to all the families. So, that was a neat little article. Um, and when it was wiped off the map, here's some homes. I don't know if these homes are still here or not. But I don't, yeah, this is from a book that we got from, I think it was published in the mid-70s. Uh -huh. But you can see these two homes, I mean, those are gorgeous. And I don't know if those two are still around because it says Marble Mill Road, and I mm -hmm. didn't see them when we drove on this. I definitely okay. haven't seen that. But the other two story. pages, I mean, they're very similar. I wonder if that home was in, they might have been moved. These... These are better still around. Yeah, these are very similar to the Maybe ones. Maybe some that, of the ones I mean, here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. This one kind of looks like that. That one right there. Yeah, maybe. But um, the um, the other thing before Kai J, um, the other, I'm glad you got your mama um back here safely. Um, so the other thing I want to have Amy tell you is the story of. I was looking for it. It's one of the highlighted pages. Here it is. Okay. The story of. President Grover Cleveland. Yes. Uh, now, um, this was during his first term, okay. not his second term, and he's been the only president who was elected two terms non-consecutively. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. And also, another random factoid, his daughter was the one that they named the Baby Ruth candy bar after. Boom! Baby Ruth? Yeah. Not the baseball player. But the candy bar and goodies. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, Keith, the book that I got, those photos of the houses, is the um, 
architecture, art field. We didn't bring it. No, I always I didn't my bring books. it, but it's on the back. You didn't bring it. Well, I don't picture. know if it's available, like, to purchase. Um, it's, we can put a picture of it in the yeah, comments when we get back to the Archaeology, office. architecture, and landscapes of Cobb County, and so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Runaway Sue's is not... Oh, Runaway Sue's, man, they tore that down. It yeah. was a hot spot for lots of yeah, let's fun. Let's because I don't know how. Okay, because you're going to tell the story about yes. Grover okay. Cleveland and Cummins. Yes. Because, you know, when Cummins right. come, it's important. Runaway Sue's moved up to 41, and then it's Diamond Dave's, and then they, they're gone. They gone. They gone. Um, all right. Three years later. I don't know, later from what? Um, like his election. <laughs> When Cleveland came through Cobb County in the autumn of 1887, the people determined to honor him fittingly. Uh, what more fitting, indeed, than to illuminate Kennesaw Mountain? Cobb County went in heavily then for illuminations of one kind or another, but never before had the county risen to such heights as it did that year. Even a president of the United States should be impressed with the illumination of an entire mountain, and Kennesaw at that. The presidential train stopping at Elizabeth, the station near the marble works from which the best view of the mountain could be obtained, slid into the little station to be greeted not only by Cobb County citizens, but by hundreds from all over Cherokee, Georgia, who wanted to see, as people said, a real live Democratic president. <laughs> There's some people who would like to see that. I know, it's like, oh, that's interesting. Perhaps presidents are not in the mood for illuminations at 10 o'clock on a rainy October night. Maybe not. <laughs> he, quote, time. he stepped out on the rear platform with his hands in his pockets, wearing a soft white felt hat, not at all becoming. Because you don't wear white after Labor Day, duh. His, <laughs> sorry. His, was it after Labor Day? Oh, October, okay. yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. His beautiful wife stood in the car door. The people feasted their eyes on the president and his wife. They anticipated that the president would bow or lift his hat to them as they called out, Cleveland, Cleveland. But he deigned not to hear and seemed stolidly oblivious of the large and enthusiastic throng. Unmoved, he stood and looked upon the fiery clouds that bathed the summit of Kennesaw. Then he turned and went back into his elegant coach without saying, I am glad to meet you, my fellow countrymen. Oh, my Nothing oh, earned and what? Cool. It is white felt hat. The only recognition received was a smile from his charming and beautiful wife. We all stand ready to vote for Mrs. Cleveland for president, but Grover had better look to his laurels. That's right. So, there you go. Cleveland can kick it. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, and at that point, the mountain was private property, so light it up was fine. Light it up. I don't know how they did that. I would like to know. I guess bonfires be mine. I guess. I'm like a bunch of bonfires, and bonfires all over the mountain. Let's talk to the National Park Service, see if we can do that. I bet they'd love to illuminate the mountain again. Let's put in a petition for that. Yeah, um, I'm sure they'd be thrilled <laughs> about that right now. Oh, there were a few other pictures that I had pulled. So before we oh, yeah, yeah. sign off, um, some other pictures in our collection that um, just relating to this area. Um, we, we're pretty sure that this. Uh, picture was taken in the area, though we don't know exactly where, but this is Wayne Clayton on his left. I'll hear you read it because I can't from this Okay. Area. Standing Wayne Clayton on the left uh, with his brothers Don in the white and Ansel um, right next to him, and then kneeling is Jesse Barnes. So um, Ansel and Clayton and his brothers, we actually have Ansel's basketball certificate yeah. in our yeah. from Elizabeth School. Somewhere and here there we is. have a picture of Don wearing, there it is. See, look at that great person. We need to bring that back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then I think there was a picture of Don um, oh. over the bottom corner in his oh. Elizabeth. You know, uh, yeah, he later went on to be to play for Aquith High School basketball team at the top there. Oh, and that's one thing. Did you mention, I wasn't paying attention, did you mention that when they closed the Elizabeth School, they separated those kids? There was only like 400 left in the school. and they. I totally them. mentioned it, and obviously she said she wasn't listening. Yes, they separated, they separated one between. There was only 240. Very they, good at tuning people out. I don't be a when I'm on a mission to find something. So, uh, 240, they split them up between uh, Kennesaw Elementary, Bells Ferry Elementary in Sedalia Park. Uh, here's, here's a picture of the Marietta Fruit Stand, a.k.a. the Elizabeth Hunter Club. Yeah, right is, there, that's where it was. So Church That was Street just that Station. restaurant that everybody remembers going to. Yeah, and those are other ones, but I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah right. Sorry. There. I, 
the bottom. Um, let me see if I can find John. I'll give you a little bit on that one. There he is. So at his school patrol uniform. Mm -hmm. So and let's see, is there one more? Oh yeah, this lady. Okay, she's got a great name. I'm gonna let you read that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Missouri Morris Johnson uh, married William P. Johnson, killed or in Cobb County. She was killed by a car on April 25th, 1929, while walking down Kennesaw Avenue. She was returning to her home. On Rose Lane Street, after she was visiting her daughter um, on Poplar Street, uh, so yeah, so that just down this Rose Lane, yeah, right like there. I said, is right down, down that way. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah. So I think that might be might be it, right? Um, if anybody has anything about I'm Elizabeth, come behind you and we can do. Oh yeah, hold on, hold on. So oh Jesus. <laughs> share with us please let us know we uh, the more the better um and then next week i don't know what we're doing but um we never know. We wing it. but to be honest i think a lot of you guys liked elizabeth here we had a good number of people so yeah, I did. it's a great area it's a beautiful day out lots of fun um add some more comments to the video if you have more stories you want to tell about uh the community here in elizabeth and what's left of it there's not a lot more so. no and we'll load this up onto youtube as well so if you have people that aren't on facebook um it'll be on our page um, I still haven't hit 20 sus subscribers, so come on, people. Oh, come on, YouTube subscribers. I mean, you know. I mean just a few more. Um, so we will see you next week. Again, if you have an idea, let us know. Um, we'll do it. Try to do it. Uh, uh, but thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Have an awesome weekend. Okay? Bye. Bye.